How warranted is the huge panic about processed foods, in your opinion? Well, again, I think the devil's in the details, right? The word processed is a bit of a troubled word because if not for processed foods, you and I would be pretty different right now. Like, I mean, processing is what allows a lot of what we eat to exist. Um, so we, you know, I don't know that, that processed foods by itself inherently implies things are bad. There are mm. lots of processed foods that are excellent foods. What would be an example? Oh, I mean, like, you know, you take like a, a, na a really natural form of like wild, I mean, I'm being completely biased because it's a company I'm an investor in, but it's the first thing that popped into my head because I had it for lunch today was like, you know, our venison sticks, right? This company I'm an investor in called Maui Nui Venison. So sorry for the we've plug. Got some, no, we've got some over there. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's a processed food, right? Like it had to be, you know, dried and put into plastic and salt had to be added to it. Um, so, but look, that's a very healthy food. Now, is it as healthy as if I had just killed that deer and just eaten that deer right there? Probably not. You know, I could probably make a case for why it's not. It's probably got more salt in it than it should or et cetera. And, and those things are there to preserve shelf life. Um, but, but that's clearly a processed food that I wouldn't put in the same camp as a bag of Pringles. So, you know, we can get into the secondary term of, you know, hyper-processed foods mm -hmm, and, and, mm -hmm. and we can talk about that. But, but I still think it's better to just talk about things from first principles as opposed to labels that are mildly descriptive, but not granular enough um, to provide real value. So to me, I would rather say, you know, a venison stick is more healthy than Pringles rather than say processed food is good or bad. Understood. What about hyper-processed foods? Is is that worthy of the the current moral panic? You know, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, again, it comes down to there are enough foods in that category that are really totally garbage, right? There's, there's no doubt about that. And the old adage that as you walk through a grocery store, most of what's in the aisles is indeed garbage. Most of what's on the perimeter is indeed good. Um, and most of what's on the inside is processed and most of what's on the outside is not. So, um, look, I, I feel lucky because I enjoy cooking. I have the means to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to rely on processed foods because again, you know, one of the things that makes processed foods so appealing is not just the taste, but it's convenience. the convenience and the caloric density per unit dollar, right? You can get a staggering amount of calories per unit, uh, uh, you know, monetary unit, um, at a great convenience, right? It's, uh, so, so the further you can get away from what I call the, 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 the sort of standard American diet where it's with its four pillars, right? Which is, you know, has to taste really good, has to be really cheap, um, has to be scalable, right? You have to be able to do it at big scale and it has to be really portable and storable. So the solution to that problem is processed food. Um, and the further you can deviate from those vectors, the better. Have you seen this activist letter against Kellogg's? So a guy called Jason Karp, Bill Ackman um, signal boosted this a couple of days ago. Uh, this dude called Jason Karp filed an activist letter against Kellogg's demanding that they stop selling what he calls inferior versions of the product in America. There's a red 40 and blue one and yellow five. There's specific colorants mm. that uh, exist. And there was this comparison chart and you had uh, what's in the Canadian version and what's in the American version. And, and the, why is it different? According to him, um, because it's not being enforced, that there was a request made or that... Um, so Canada stepped up and made a request for a better product? I, I, it, it should have been done. Based on what I know, it should have been done across the board. Kellogg said that they were going to get rid of these things in America, but they didn't. And it seems you know, all manner of conspiracy theories then ensue. They're in bed with the FDA. Uh, someone's being given a backhander. Um, this is indicative of America's total blase, careless nature with the food that is being consumed by the, you know, pick your explanation of choice. But it seems that there are certainly uh, colorants and some other um, ingredients, compounds that are in specifically Kellogg's. But let me ask a naive question. Like what, Kellogg's product would you consider good for you anyway? Like what Kellogg's product should we be eating? 
I don't know. I don't know. No, I'm not even asking rhetorically. I just don't know enough about their products. But like, it would be cereal. You know, a lot of children having these Fruit Loops and stuff like that first thing in the morning. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I would. I, I don't mean to sound like a cranky old guy, but why would we want our kids eating Fruit Loops in the morning? Like, I mean, again, it, I know I just a moment ago said, well, I, it sounded like, oh, maybe he's waffling on processed food. Right. But I'm not waffling on a particular food. Mm -hmm. Like, there, you know, Fruit Loops might be a treat like for dessert, but like on, on what planet like would that. you say we're going to start our day with candy? Because that's all it is. It's just candy that you add milk to. You've got kids. Yeah. What do you, for the parents out there, they... Oysters and coffee, sadly, for breakfast, probably not going to happen. What do you feed your kids that satiates their desire for for their palate to be muy bueno, but also... Yeah, so when they do eat cereal, they eat cereal that's a little less sweet. So they're going to eat Cheerios. Now, maybe Kellogg. I don't think Kellogg's makes Cheerios, do it? No, I, I think know. that's Nestle, maybe. Yeah. So anyway, so that, you know, Cheerios is kind of their cereal. Uh, you know, they'll put berries in it, yogurt, applesauce. Again, processed, but it's, you know, you can get an applesauce that literally has the only ingredient as apples. Right. Um, and that's, that's what they eat. Um, is that typical eat, breakfast? What's a typical yeah, breakfast? Yeah. Oh, bacon, sausage, like they eat venison, um, eggs. Like we make them little, you know, like ra egg wraps, toast, you know, again, like, it's not like, I'm, I don't want to paint the picture that my kids are these little organic vegan machines. Like, yeah. no, no, they're, yeah. they're, but, but again, like what I just described is I think a far healthier breakfast than, you know, eating pop tarts or eating, uh, what fruit you, loops. What are you actively trying to avoid the sugar? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I do think we try to be mindful of sugar and crappy junk food and just limit when they're going to have it and how much they're going to have. Um, so my kids, by the way, I mentioned it a minute ago, but my kids love Pringles. So they can have some, but they're not going to eat like this many of them, right? They're going to have that many of them because we buy like little mini packs of them, which are not cost efficient, but like we're not optimizing for that, right? We're optimizing for a I small serving dose. size where it's like one and done and dad's not going to eat it. There's this, uh, yeah, that's true because once they've opened it, it's now- Yeah, there's a tube of Pringles, like I'll eat it. It's the trickle down effect of, right, okay. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about the fact that if you get your kids something that they like, that's also something you need to deal with now being in the house. It's so interesting. I am- um, It's think, also sometimes you just go out for stuff as opposed to keep it in the house, right? So uh, like- you know, we, we went go out, out for ice, ice cream. cream. Yeah, we went out for ice cream the other day and it's better because you just go out, you get it over with, you're done, you come home. But to have ice cream in the freezer every day would be a problem for me. Yes, I need, uh, geographic distance is the best discipline uh, for me when it comes to diet. In other news, this episode is brought to you by Marrick Health. When I wanted to get my blood work done in America, I asked around, I did a ton of research, and Marrick Health came back as the best quality service that you can find. And I loved it so much, I reached out to the owner to actually partner with them on the show. They genuinely understand training, diet, supplementation, and pharmaceuticals. They don't want to make interventions you don't need. They will make suggestions that are minimum dose and appropriate for you and your goals and your age. They're great. It is literally like having a personalized bio health hacker in your pocket that understands you and your bloods at all time. You might have heard that I took my testosterone from 495 to 1006, and that was with the help of Marrick Health without using TRT, but by optimizing everything else that I was doing in my life. Right now, you can get the exact same service that I got by going to the link in the show notes below or heading to marrickhealth.com slash modern wisdom. That's M-A-R-E-K health.com slash modern wisdom.